opening scene, we are introduced to a beautiful Japanese girl named Chiharu Takajo. She is stranded at a bus stop because of the pouring rain. A young man, Yuichi Tokunagi, gets off a bus and joins her. He tries to start a conversation with Chiharu, but she is dismissive of his efforts. Yuichi takes the hint and quits talking. They wait for the rain to stop in complete silence, but after waiting for several minutes, both of them get bored. Yuichi notices a film poster behind them and comments that he has always wanted to watch it. Chiharu also claims that she hasn't watched a movie in a long time. The pair goes silent again, but Yuichi takes a chance and asks Chiharu to go out on a movie date with him. She is left stunned and quite nervous about going out with a stranger, but Yuichi doesn't give her a chance to answer and runs to buy two tickets. Chiharu smiles at him and the two start to date from that day onwards. They are so madly in love with each other that after dating for only a few months, they decide to get married. A wedding planner gives them a tour of a chapel and briefs them about the anniversary gift services they provide. The couple buys a package where their anniversary gifts, until the 10th year of their marriage, will be sent by the company. The gift for the 10th anniversary is a customized video that they will have to shoot for their future selves. Chiharu excitedly compares the videos to a time capsule, however, Yuichi is not so confident about it. Yet, he agrees to participate for his fiance. In the following scene, they shoot the videos professionally. Yuichi awkwardly asks the camera about their 10th anniversary, while Chiharu leaves a delightful message for a 35-year-old Yuichi. That evening, they go to the wedding planner to finalize their venue. As they talk, Chiharu notices an advertisement for a package that the company provides. It describes a special program that helps a couple to take a look at their future life with each other. The planner says that the program is called the Marriage Simulator, and most couples use it to find out if they are really compatible. He asks them if they want to apply, but the pair is skeptical. When Shiharu returns home that day, she and her roommate talk about her upcoming marriage. According to her roommate, the couple is making the decision hastily. Chiharu claims that they are happy in their relationship and know that they are making a good decision. Besides, people who think too much about it never get married these days. The roommate jokingly gives the example of a dress that Chiharu impulsively bought some months ago and wore only once. She suggests Chiharu think about the marriage again because they have been dating for only a few months. When she expresses her relief about not marrying her former boyfriend, Chiharu does start to question her decision. To be absolutely sure about marrying him, she decides to apply to the marriage simulator program and convinces Yuichi as well. In the following scene, they are at the company's headquarters, discussing the program. The officials explain that the scientists can predict how the couple's marriage life will be by examining their DNA, their medical data, their personal background, and their character profiles. This way, their future married life is simulated in the form of a dream and shown to the couple. Following that, they acquire Chiharu and Yuichi's blood samples and lots of medical data along with their background history. Then, the two are seated in special chairs and a device is attached to their heads. The doctor warns them that the future they see through the device is not absolute and might change according to their emotional reactions. Finally, the device starts and they are made to fall asleep. At first, the couple dreams about their wedding day. They stand in front of the guests who cheer for them, happily stepping into the next part of their lives. The first morning after the wedding, they wake up and are just as happy. Chiharu has made breakfast for Yuichi that the two enjoy together. That is, until they realize that they prefer different side dishes with their breakfast. It is only a small compromise that the two have to make, but it doesn't end there. Chiharu discovers that Yuichi always leaves the toilet seat up, which causes a minor argument. Again, one of them has to compromise. When they go to sleep at night, Chiharu has the habit of leaving the lights on, but Yuichi cannot fall asleep with them on. Somehow, they haven't figured this out yet. In the same way, as time passes, the couple eventually realizes that their lifestyles are very different from each other. One day, Chiharu has enough of her husband not listening to her, so she tells him that she feels underappreciated. Yuichi, on the other hand, puts the blame on her for never dressing up, putting on makeup, and looking pretty. Ooh, that was a stupid, stupid thing to say, Yuichi. Following that, the couple is woken up for a break. Yuichi says that he knows Kung Fu. They're clearly not happy after watching what their future will be like. They try to be optimistic and assume that they will eventually get used to living with each other. Yuichi says that no matter what happens, he will not leave her side. 
While going down the elevator, they come across another couple who has also just seen their future. The girl is crying because the man is about to cheat on her. He tries to explain that he would never do something like that, but the marriage simulator has already predicted the future. Sometime later, they continue the simulation and dream of Chiharu being pregnant. They discuss the possible names for their child and decide to name it Haruki if it is a boy and Yuka if it is a girl. In a few months, Chiharu gives birth to a beautiful boy. Her mother-in-law calls him Yutaro. Chiharu looks at Yuichi uncomfortably, asking him why the mother is calling their son a different name. The woman laughs and claims that according to their family's tradition, the first kid should be something with the letter Y. Yuichi doesn't want to go against his mother, so he just accepts the name, while Chiharu is furious at him for not mentioning this before. On their fifth anniversary, Chiharu prepares him a dinner at home and waits for him for hours. Yuichi comes home at midnight and says that he has already eaten at a business dinner. Chiharu is clearly hurt and upset, but Yuichi is dismissive of her effort to make him happy. She suggests they go out for dinner the next day, but Yuichi has to attend a golf match. Chiharu remembers the day they had met for the first time and reminisces about how good life was then. Chiharu finally tells him that she is hurt, to which he replies that he works hard to provide for the family, so she should be happy instead. He harshly asks her to stop bitching so much and be satisfied with what she has for once in her life. In the following scene, the couple is talking about Yutaro's school fees. Chiharu wants to start working to be able to provide their kid with better things, but Yuichi insists he already earns enough for the family. Chiharu accuses him of trying to keep her in the house because he doesn't want her to grow professionally. The two get into yet another argument and start yelling at each other. They both argue that they have sacrificed a lot for the family, but are oblivious of what the other person has done. As their screams start getting louder, poor Yutaro comes to their room crying because he is scared. Chiharu quickly gets up and calms him down. As she is hugging the kid, Yuichi approaches her and says that they should separate for good. Chiharu just hugs her son tighter and cries. In the next scene, they finally sign the divorce paper. Moments later, the pair wakes up in the chair. The officials ask them about their experience, but they stay frozen in their seats. They must be shocked by how predictably their marriage turned out. After composing themselves, they get up and confront each other. Chiharu is beyond hurt by what she just witnessed. She slaps Yuichi, calling him a liar for promising that he will always stick by her side. Yuichi has nothing else to say. He simply claims that it is better they know this before their wedding, because now they can take a step back and prevent themselves from wasting time on each other. Plus, you don't have to pay for the wedding, Yuichi, you cheap bastard. With that kind of future, they do not want to marry anymore. Yuichi asks the wedding planner to cancel the ceremony. The officials are shocked, but they respect the pair's decision. Chiharu returns home, but she feels like she is missing a part of herself after breaking up with Yuichi. Her roommate tries to console her and advises her to never marry because all men change after marriage, but the advice does little to nothing to help her mood. For the next few days, she keeps herself busy with work. If she is free, she either goes swimming or hangs out with her friend to keep the thought of Yuichi out of her mind. One day, she returns home to see that she has received a package from the wedding planner that contains the video Yuichi was supposed to give her on their 10th wedding anniversary. As she contemplates playing it, she gets a call from Yuichi. It turns out the company accidentally sent them the opposite tapes, so he asks her to throw them away. Chiharu says that she will, but after the call, she can't help but play it hoping to see him one last time. In the video, Yuichi greets her and apologizes for all the mistakes he has made throughout the years. He admits he can be non-communicative sometimes and claims that even though he doesn't say it, he loves her a lot. To Chiharu's surprise, he also confesses that the time they met at the bus stop was not the first time he saw her. Yep, you guessed it, stalker. In fact, he had seen her at the train station one day and instantly knew that she was the one Following that, he always looked forward to seeing her around the neighborhood. He wanted to approach her, but never had the guts until he saw her at the bus stop that day. He had even left his umbrella on the bus so he could spend some time with her. Yuichi ends the video by telling her that they should go to a movie theater and see if they are showing a romantic film. If they are by chance showing one, that will mean that they were always meant to be. Given how popular rom-coms are, Yuichi made a smart bet here. By the end of the video, Chiharu is left sobbing. She has a hundred things going on in her mind. Without thinking much, she runs to the movie theater that they went to on their first date. 
To her disappointment, it is showing a horror movie instead of a romantic one. She is about to return, when suddenly, Yuichi also arrives and asks her to come to the movies with him. The pair smiles at each other and reunites. Then, we find out that they're still watching the simulation. Them cancelling the wedding was also part of it. The couple opens their eyes, still trying to comprehend the roller coaster of emotions they have felt in the past two hours. They get up from their seats and do not say a word to each other. The planner congratulates them and asks them about the experience, but still, the pair doesn't speak. In the following scene, we see them walking through a park. They have not talked to each other since watching the simulation. After walking for a long time, they hold hands and smile at each other.